Hey, this is Candy Arakel, founder of Centro de Poder, and you're at the Sensual Sessions podcast, the place to sense your fire in order to share the flame. And if you haven't subscribed already, please go to www.centrodepoder.com and get yourself signed up to get these episodes delivered weekly on your inbox. And today is a special day because we have a very special guest. This is Andy Lee, a UX designer, a mindful magician, and a mindfulness practitioner. Welcome, Andy. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Candy. I'm happy to be here. So I am very curious on how you do this integration of mindfulness and magic and UX design, because from an, my own informed perspective, I thought of UX as something like very square and and like analytical and like computer wise and like machine mediated and mindfulness something that is like beyond uh, an iphone or an application or something technical so would you share with us like how how you make sense of of your different interests and what brought you into, into the practice of mindfulness along your way? Sure thing, Candia. Um, so I, I think uh, one of the misconceptions for, for people when it comes to UX design is that, you know, they, they might think that it's just some, like computers and they might think of a lot of like analysis and um, statistics or, you know, a very, a lot of computer stuff, but at the core of UX design is actually user experience. And it's all about the, the human experience. So when, when you have a UX designer involved in any sort of applications or making or websites, they are very, um, uh, they, 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 there's a lot of empathy that they have to practice and they really have to understand what is the experience as a user when they're navigating through the website or application. So for example, if they if, if, if there's a new app that comes out and there's no there's nobody gonna be there, there isn't gonna be anybody there that's gonna walk them through how to use the app. It has to be intuitive for them. So if the user is going to encounter something and they don't know what to do next, then you better believe that that app is not gonna be successful. So behind that app is someone that's actually watching that. And the same thing goes with websites. So when someone is navigating on a website, and if, not, if they are unable to find what they're looking for in, in a very intuitive and easy manner, then, uh, then, then that website is not going to be a value to them. Um, the realm of user experience does not, is not limited to just computers and apps. Mm -hmm. When you look at... Um, life in uh, for example um let's say a door you know sometimes like have you even have you ever encountered a door where you when you're going to it and then you pulled it when you were supposed to push it mm -hmm. or you pushed it when you were supposed to pull it and wow. there's some confusion in there and it's because yeah. the way it's designed it's not intuitive <laughs> right and there's a handle right so a handle looks like you want to pull but if it was just a flat bar right then intuitively you know okay let's push that door right so there's a lot of these are things that a designer has thought about beforehand so that when a user comes they they intuitively know what to do so there is actually in fact a lot of empathy uh involved when it comes to ux design um the same thing with magic like m the the connection with magic is you know magic is all about creating connection with the, with the users and it's all about also like creating perceptions as well. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely playing, there's an element of play in there and there's a lot of like empathy when it comes to magicians because in some ways we are, we're, we're creating lies, um, but I'd like to look at it as a way of like 
you know, when you know how to lie, you actually know what the truth is as well when it comes to magic. Um, um it's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so like, like when, when you see, you know, when you think about like magic and we're creating these experiences for them and the, the, the reaction from them is, is so genuine. It's not, it's, it's not something that is manufactured. Like it's not something that is artificial. Like the, the emotions that they feel on the receiving end is a real emotion that they're feeling, right? There's these feelings of awe and all these things. And as a magician, I know that the reason why they feel like that is because of the way, how they are sensing things through their eyes, yes. through their ear, through their ears, and um, and it's all all these things are actually creating experience in their minds, right? And then, and so whenever I when I think about magic and I think about in real life it's easier for me to understand why people can be confused with things or why they might arrive at a certain um, conclusion to things. Because even though it might not be true, but we can be a bit more empathetic towards that because maybe if we were sitting in their shoes and we saw everything that they saw in the order that they saw it, then we might have came to the same conclusion. Right. Um, and, you know, with magic, there's a lot of like areas, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of behind the scenes that that's hidden from view. And that's that's what also informs their their um, their, their 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 sort of conclusion. So I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll tie that later on with something because that, that's a really important piece because there is this ignorance part. Right. That they don't know. That plays into their reality. So. Um, when it comes to like mindfulness, um, yeah. this is something that I kind of came across like accidentally. And this was about like 10 years ago uh, when I worked on a cannabis farm uh, of all places. A marijuana and, um, farm. With, um, <laughs> yes, a marijuana farm. farm. Super party, private, <laughs> fun farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about like, hundreds, hundreds of plants. Yeah, uh, swimming in marijuana, and um, that that is like a little bit controversial for me being Mexican and living in Mexico. That I don't know the final status of of marry weed legalization, but as far as I know, it's ambiguous. And like five years ago, you you would go to jail if if they find you like this of a marijuana blunt inside your shoe. Inside your sock, mm. the toes, like wow. yeah, like you go to jail for for illegal possession. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so so it's like wow, that's, that's... About, like yeah, <laughs> there were thousands of marijuana plants, and it's like what? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening or watching this podcast in in a country <laughs> where weed is uh, penalized and illegal, like. Worry not. Andy worked in the US on under all the permits. In Canada. Ah, in Canada. Yeah. That's super cool. Yes. yes. So in and Canada. With plants like, yeah. like like hot vibes. In Canada is super cold. How how did they manage to survive and what did you do so they didn't die? Well, um, okay, so first off, like Canada, um, I think a lot of people have this impression that Canada is pretty cold, and it can be cold in the wintertime, um, but it's only cold like from like November, like fall starts in like September, October, but we have snow maybe like starting from December to like February, March, right? But the rest of the the, the year is actually really warm. It It, it gets hot up to like... Yeah, it can get up to like 35 to 40 degrees here. Um, it's, we have summer just like you would see like in California. <laughs> like a normal person. For a yeah, person. yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, 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 well, uh, another enlightening fact because I really thought of Canada like, <laughs> like being like, like a place with, with the polar, polar birds and penguins. 
I think those are from the <laughs> south. But yeah, like, like <laughs> it's next to Groenland, and like the North Pole is like two steps from there, so it must be not very warm. But <laughs> nice to know that it's not that 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 cold. So yeah, so it, what, it, yeah, yeah. It can it can be cold, uh, but yeah, actually this year, like I don't know with global warming, I, I don't know what's going on, but our we haven't had a lot of snow either. And I I, I love I, I've been I've been wanting it to snow actually so that I can go snowboarding. Um, but anyways, we we're we're actually where I'm situated. So I'm in uh, like Toronto, so yeah. which is and then like and then in southern Ontario, so it's a little bit I guess more south as well. So. Um, and we're we're near the, uh, the I guess the Niagara region. So there's like the Niagara Falls. Probably, maybe you're familiar with that. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of vineyards. There's a lot of like Ontario wines that grow here as well. Um, but yeah. Um, so the the cannabis farm was, was actually indoors. So um, a, a lot of the the. The infrastructure was actually built with um, artificial lights that was okay. in there. So we, so a lot of the lights were all built in, and then we, we, we actually had to. So, so in that way, we we're able to um, um, grow them like twenty four hour seven, right? And uh, just to kind of like give our listeners uh, some context, like in terms of Canada, I think at that time the the government was providing licenses for uh for people to grow um their own cannabis uh, initially especially if 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 their their users that were that needed it for their own health benefits and some of them they had these licenses to be able to grow uh a certain amount of uh, a certain number of plants and then and because they might not have the um the the resources to be able to grow themselves, then what happens is they would like give it to someone else and they would grow on behalf of them. And so that was actually what what, what happened was with, with, with us. So there was someone that had all these licenses and they were growing for them. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And uh, and then today, actually cannabis is is not only legal, but it's 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 sold in dispensaries like locally. Like you can actually drive somewhere to a store and you can actually buy it, <laughs> yeah, like, and it's taxed buy, as well. Taxed, like buy a Coca Cola and a cannabis blunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and a bunch of donuts for the munchies afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's a whole different world now. Um, yeah, it's 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 great yeah. that is legalized because then things get in the norm and they're like. It's it's a cleaner process as it should be, especially with cannabis that is such a unique plant that is great for creating textiles, uh, to make paper. Like it has thousands of use besides uh, the medis, medical use and and the high times party use. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us. Yeah. How, how what did you learn with and um, in that environment like because that must be like you go to to the farm like it's it's another kind of lifestyle like from toronto that is like a, a high tech city to to a farm how was that oh man it was a very humbling experience like like when I look back and when I think about what was happening, I I was actually like in in some ways. When I think about the environment, I was kind of like in a retreat environment. So retreats, the te like usually they're they're not in a busy area. They're they're usually in a place where it's in nature and you're kind of like away from the city you're trying to be away from all the hustle and bustle and all these things that are trying to uh grab your attention and you know because of the the nature of my work i also didn't want i, I wasn't like keeping in communication with like my friends 
and family or because I didn't want to tell them like, oh yeah, I guess what I'm doing, right? And there and then there's all these questions and it's just like it was it was better for me just just to like just not say anything. And so I was unplugging without realizing that I was unplugging, you know, like how in a retreat. And because of the nature of the work as well, it was on a farm. So it was like really like the next closest store was like very, very far away. Like you, you'd have to drive like, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour just, just to get to a store. So like, um, so we, we tried to stay there. Like, like we, we didn't leave uh, much and, and there wasn't a lot of people working there either. And, and there, there were times where it was just me by myself, you know, in this huge barn and, I, can't, I couldn't tell you how big it is, but, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about hundreds of plants, maybe up to a thousand plants that was there. And, and you know, every time I would water the plants, I would water like a thousand liters. Like I can't, like a thousand liters is a lot of water. Like, like you're talking about. Like, um, like a, a yeah, swimming it would take pool. like two hours. Yeah, like a swimming pool of water or a jacuzzi. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I, I uh maybe a jacuzzi yeah maybe a jacuzzi yeah um yeah like maybe maybe like a hot, a hot tub maybe two like two hot tubs maybe maybe uh -huh. more um and so like I would water and then like every time I was was that a lot of water yeah and a lot yeah. of time yeah oh yeah a lot of water yeah. yes how long so there's a I, I was like, so every time I would water, it would take me like, ha uh, like 30 seconds to water each plant. And it would, it would be like two hours to finish watering like half of the, the plants. Right. And so while I was watering, I would have this timer that I would have with my hand. And then so that, it, so I didn't have to think about like watering and cause I can't rely on counting. So I'd be like one, two, three. And if, 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 if I was impatient that I would count like one, two, like 30 30 seconds really <laughs> fast, right? <laughs> and, if, <laughs> and if you're like yeah. chilling, so, smoking, it's one, two, <laughs> until you feel that <laughs> water dropping in your feet, three. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? So then I, that, so a, a timer was necessary. So, so I'd go, I would water. And then because I had all this free time, um, I would listen to audiobooks. And the one audiobook that really uh, that I was listening to a lot was the uh, the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, yes. and um, really? this was one of the books that I oh amazing amazing book I it, it was my I would say the real the real sort of like entry to spirituality even though I've I've read the the Bible before and I've, I've I'm a I grew up as a Catholic and I went to Catholic school. And did all those things. This, this, I would say, this book was the first book that was more on the spiritual side. And um, yeah, and then you know, as I was listening to it, I, I, it was, you know, it seemed really obvious what the author was saying, but at the same time, there's a lot of terminology that used a lot of these very flowery metaphor language, like with the with the Toltec. Um, which okay. is the, I guess, the ancient, that's the ancient uh, tradition, I guess. Like, um, I'm not sure, like, I'm not, I'm not really well versed in that. Maybe you'll know more about the Toltecs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, like, the, the wisdom lineage from one of the ancient Mexican cultures, the, the Toltec, mm. it's the warrior way of the Toltecs. Yes. And it's so beautiful. And, you know, I, I, as I was listening to it, like, like first it's, it seems obvious, but then that's the ego talking. And then like, every time I listen more and more, it gets more deeper and deeper. And, and yeah, and it was really interesting kind of feeling, I almost felt that like I was in a, in a bit of a trance when I was listening to this. And if you think about the conditions I was in, I didn't, there wasn't a lot of input from I like I, like I wasn't getting all this stimulation from all these other things like the worries of the busyness of life right oh I have to do this I have to do that I have to do this like all I had to care about was one I need to water plants two I need to eat shower sleep nice. that's it like there's nothing else there's, 
Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so then I would go and then I would like care for these plants and then, you know, and then eventually over time, um, I, I really got, I, I, I noticed a lot of things of the plants and I learned so much from it and understanding like what, like what, what is it that you need in order for a plant to really thrive? And, um, and one of the things that I feel is really important for every single human being to learn is like how to grow a plant. I think that should be a requirement for everyone because um, you can't get angry at a plant if it doesn't grow the way that, that you want it to, right? And the more you get angry at it, the more it's not going to work. And so there's, in, in some ways, the, the plant is a reflection of, of the gardener. And, uh, and it can only thrive in the right environment. And so the, the, the environment is something that you have to create as the gardener, it's something that we have to kind of uh, bring awareness to, right? And so, you know, if the plant is sick, um, we we need to be able to look at the leaves and see, okay, you know, why, like, like is 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 it yellow? Where is it turning yellow? Is it is it on the new growth that's turning yellow? Is the yellow on the old leaves? Is it coming from the inside of the leaf? Is it coming from the outside of the leaf? These are all sort of like nutri nutrient deficiencies. Um, what about the temperature? Are we overwatering? Are we underwatering um, the plants? Sometimes you have to prune the leaves too in the right areas for it to grow, to grow in the right areas. And that's the same thing in life too. Like when you think about how many things what are the things that you have to be able to let go of what what are the things that you have to cut in order for you to be able to grow in other areas in in other ways because a lot of the energy is being diverted you know and it's it has sort of the same type of metaphor and um and so eventually like over time i got really good at it and um and and so good that I was able to sort of get the attention of like the people uh, who were, um, I guess, running, like financing the the, the operation, and um, and I got uh, I got um, compensated very very handsomely because of that, and um, and then for me that was a moment of like self actualization because there was so much love and care and dedication for me to really put into just this this plant and to be able to rec be recognized for it and there was it was a moment for me to realize that that value was created from within me right it was something that given the the focus if there was enough focus and concentration if you remove a lot of distractions there's something that we can always you know produce right as 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 i think any every human being so that so that was a moment of self-actualization but that's not the spiritual awakening yet so the spiritual awakening came when i went to a bookstore and um i remembered like you know like going to Indigo Books, and then I, I was kind of walking through, and I had this, like this huge mustache, right? Like because I didn't care about how I looked, <laughs> right? And I wasn't trying to impress anybody, you know. And it's just like my hair would be like was all over here, and and I and I remember like walking through the bookstore, and I see this one book, and um, let me just grab it for you. It's this. It's this book called the the uh the assertiveness workbook Screenshot. and it's a uh yeah the assertiveness workbook so it's it's a psychology book by um randy j patterson and it's a book about communication styles and uh and i was kind of going through flipping through and i was like oh this is cool the assertiveness i've heard of this before i'm like i'm fl flipping through and then i was look looking at all these communication styles and then there's like there's passive and then there's like aggressive and there's passive aggressive and passive aggressive was something that I've, I've always learned about. I've heard of, but I'd never quite understood what it was. And then, so I was reading and I'm like, 
oh, interesting. And it was giving me some, some examples. And um, I was like, okay, I, I want to learn about this. So I, I, so I buy this book. I take it with me. I, I go back to the farmhouse and I'm, and I'm reading through it. And then so I'm going through it. I'm reading it. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I, I can see the distinctions between each of the, the, the communication styles. And then I start to learn about the stress response. And then the stress response, you know, what, what, what is actually happening during body? So it's like the, and it's, you know, this, 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 this response that was built into our nervous system because, you know, when, you know, in, in ancient times, when we were endangered, you know, if there was like a saber toothed tiger that was, that was running after you, then you, you're the, nat the, the natural tendencies for the body to uh, allocate all of this blood into like these certain areas, uh, to your arms, into your legs, the heart will start to palpitate. The, the attention starts to be very focused. Our breathing starts to be a lot more shallow and really fast because it's really uh, preparing us. And these are things that are all happening on a subconscious level. And uh, it, 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 it really started to open up my eyes. And, I, and then I saw the, the connection between fear and anger and how, how that came about with, um, and how that was shaped by our upbringing. And our parents and I started to make all these connections and then I and then suddenly there was this moment where everything just connected and I felt like all these walls that were in my in my head like all these things in terms of the way that our, our minds like to categorize things because we you know, when we grow up, right, we're all about like name, this is this, that is that, this is this. But all these walls broke down and everything just became connected. And I had like this moment of like understanding and clarity and, and like for the next like few weeks, I was just like crying so much because of, under of, of this understanding and the, and then I started to see things about like I was, I understood all the confusion that people were experiencing because they, there's a lack of understanding of these stress responses. And every time anybody's is acting out of anger, it's because they their 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 minds are subconsciously perceiving something for them to either be scared of, to be to to be fearful of it, to freeze. Or for them to want to fight without even knowing it. There's there there there's not enough time for our minds to, um, to learn that no, actually you're not in danger, right? But it's already too late. Like you're you're already we're we're already reacting, right? And that causes this reaction, and then the other person gets reacted, and and then I that I started to see how war. I started to see the connection with how war is ha happening and it's like, it's all confusion, right? And I remember there was this very distinct moment where I, I saw the, the crucifix. So it was the cross and with Jesus on it and I looked at it and I, I started crying so much and I was like, oh my God, like, you're a real person. You're real. Like, I, I understand what you're trying to say now i really understand now this was like it was like an experience for me where i it was like i think in some people would say like it was like christ consciousness um because i saw the confusion i'm like it, it, it instead of learning about jesus it wasn't something that was like that was in like taught to me where i'm like okay this is what he did I remember it and I learned it's, it wasn't like that. It was a, an experience where I felt like I, I knew what he was thinking. And I'm like, I get it now. Like you being kind to these people, even, you know, like, like during his crucifixion, I know the Romans came and they, they, he was still kind to them, even though, you know, like when, when I remember there was a part where his, their ears got cut and he, he still like had compassion for them. I, I just felt connected. It was it was probably the most the, the closest experience. Like when I think about at that time, there was like I felt like I was enlightened. Like like 
like the Buddha was like, how the Buddha was enlightened. Like it was as if this whole world just opened up for me and it just expanded. And, and like my heart, like I remembered my heart, something was happening within me. It felt like something opened up and things started healing within me. And like, and then from that moment on, like whenever I went out, like there would be like, I would have all this, this emotional ro ro roller coaster where I would like, have these moments where I would just start laughing out of nowhere because I would realize the ridiculousness of things. And then I would like cry because I understood I had this um, realization that, oh my God, like a lot of these experiences that I had growing up where I felt like a victim, where I felt like, oh, why is it that I attract these people that come into my life and somehow take advantage of me. And then I realized afterwards, I was like, oh, it's because I was co-creating these experiences. It was because I didn't understand how to communicate assertively. I didn't know how to communicate in a way that really honored me. And it's and it was because of the way the my relationship with fear, right? Because I was passive, I was in all these things. And, and because I was passive, I was allowing these experiences to happen to me because I didn't know how to, how to actually respond in, in the correct way. And so there was something very liberating about that. It was like, there was a self acceptance. It was like, I, I actually do have the power to change these experiences if, if I knew how. So it's not something where I'm blaming myself. It's not. It's not something. It's not something I would say. It's my fault, but it's more like there was. It was. I would, it was an unskillfulness. Is that it's because I didn't know yet at that time. So it's like, and it's okay, you know. And so like I and it like being unskillful is is a very for me is a very compassionate um, term, terminology that we can provide. Like we can share with people, you know, because. There's, we're not blaming, right? It's just because you didn't know, you know? And and I remembered, like, from that moment on, when I would go and interact with people, it was, like, really weird. Like, all the people that that I used to normally interact with that were into all these, like, very artificial things, like, and, and I would talk about this stuff, It like, you can tell right away it was a very, like, repulsive type of interaction. Like, it's, like, getting too... The same pole of the magnet, you know, you know, when you get like the north and north magnet and you push it and just pushes it away. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Like all the people that were that I used to associate with, like on a more artificial level, it just naturally like like it, it pulled us apart. And then people that were a bit more authentic, I felt a lot more at home to them. And then and then when I was encountering people, I I remembered um just being so much more open so much more loving for for for, for these people like it, and i i felt this presence with me i remember like looking in the mirror as well and seeing like my best friend like 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 the person that 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 i was looking for like my whole life was like right in front of me you know and and um. just being like just knowing that 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 if I like like as long as I have my own back, as long as I have I can be my best supporter, then then it's everything's gonna be okay. And and that was the beginning. And then you know from there I started to like learn a little bit about like mindfulness. And I learned I learned about Tekken Han, Zen Master Tekken Han, who's the Vietnamese Zen master. And then before that, I've never I'm Vietnamese myself. I've never heard of who he was. And then like I started to come across his 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 quotes about breathing and I was like okay what's this this is you know really simple and then I learned about a bit more about mindfulness and then like um and then before I know it you know there's this retreat that's happening in Toronto and you know he it's it's a, a treaty a, a retreat under his tradition and then, and then one of my friends, you know, I reached out to my one of my friends, and she was um, uh, just because I, I felt this gratitude towards her. I I just like I was because during that time I was just thinking about things, and then I I was like, hey, 
I was thinking about this one friend. I was like, I, I just want to, I just had this feeling of reaching out to her and just wanted to be thankful for her, you know, out of nowhere. And then, you know, she was caught off guard and then, you know, very, you know, she, you know, she received it. And then she's like, Hey, by the way, there's this retreat going on. I was like, Hey, really? And then, you know, and then, so it's like all these signs started to like pull me into like this retreat. And then, so I went there, I attended the retreat and then, you know, I was learning about mindfulness and, and then they were talking, they were teaching about, our stress responses too, right? So it's like flight or fight and 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 freeze and all these things. I was like, wait a second. I'm like, th this is something that I, that I'm just learning now too. Like I had this realization, and then um, and that like that got me on the path. And then from from that retreat on, mindfulness practice in the Plum Village tradition has been something that's that I've carried with me ever since then. So I would go to these retreats. I would um, help organize retreats eventually. And then, um, and then, you know, and then I would help facilitate mindfulness sessions, you know, on a, you know, either weekly, bi-weekly, bi -week, bi basis. We would hold space for other young adults. And then, uh, yeah. And then I ventured to other practices too. Like I've done the, uh, the 10 day silence meditation retreats as well. I've, I've actually done several of them, uh, which is a completely different tradition and a completely different environment. But anyways, I, uh, long story, but I guess I can, uh, yeah, I just want to share that. Yes, I, it's as if, in a way, your experience with, with plants, like being in a secluded context without the, the atmosphere that often sucks us into distraction, like, you were like in a farm, oftentimes you were alone, and you became acquainted with these plants to the point of, of learning and noticing like, ah, the leaf is getting yellow or it's the stem or what is going on? Like you, de you developed an empathy for the plants that in a way was a seed or the content, or you created, yeah, it was a seed, and at the same time, like a fertile ground for for the spiritual awakening that you had afterwards. But it's, but it's like, yeah, it makes sense, like the journey, the process, and and in a way, the putting the worldly noise and relations aside like i am not telling anything about this to my family because why give explanations this is about me in the same way that spiritual awakening and realization is about you with yourself and no one else like it's not about proving something to someone and it gets intimate uh, in, a, in a very interesting, like a kind of soft strength of having your own back, but for yourself. And that set in a way like, like the basis of your broad understanding in relation with other people, even though you will never see that people that is on the other side of the app or the interface that you design, but it makes sense. Like, I don't know who designed the, these things from Apple, but like one day I realized that it has a little thingy on one side. So, so you can stick the cable <laughs> from the other side and like they it clicks perfectly when you are not like live and people looking at you and you get like clumsy and nervous and it doesn't happen but well you get the idea like someone, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. someone, someone thought about having the controls like handy wow now I feel it like this position of my hand is, say, 
well, I have my spoon because of the sugar of the coffee. Every time you bring food to your, your mouth, this is the journey of your hand. And guess where the controls of the earpods are placed? Like, of course, it was someone that thought about you by sensing its own body and made it easy for you, so easy that it was intuitive. Like the door that if it has a handle, it means pull. If it has a bar, it means push. And it's, it's, that's empathy in action and it bypasses the the endless discourse of rationality and thoughts so really this use user design is not about just clicking in a machine computer as i thought mm -hmm. it goes beyond mm -hmm. and it has this mindfulness component of of being so practical and functional based in empathy that bypasses the rational discourse. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. And also, yeah. like, not that Jesus made a UX interface, but in a way he did. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I, I, I almost cried because it hit me hard. You, this, this, this memory of yours when you face the cross and you understood. Like, I wasn't there, but I, I saw myself there, and I, I understood too. Like, it's super fucking sad and like. It's the worst that can happen. How a human hanged in a cross. Like, like it's horrible and mm. it's heartbreaking. And we have it in our face. And we see it so much that we don't see it. But we really need to look at that. Of... Of... Yeah. The need... that humanity and all of us have for empathy. Emp empathy for the other, of course. But that empathy starts with being sensitive and sensible to your own self. That comes from looking at yourself in the mirror and realizing that you're your best friend that mm. you will take care of you, that you mm. will nurture you in the same way that you nurture your plants. And in a way, like, you cannot blame a plant for not blooming because it's up to you to, to provide the conditions for the plant to bloom. Exactly in the same yeah. way that you cannot blame anyone else for what you see in the mirror mm. it's 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 a personal responsibility but not from the point of view of the duty but more in an organic way like mm. in a spacious way yeah yeah i think if the like in terms of like the you know what you're saying there right like it's absolutely right like when it comes to empathy for others like that it's really like i guess through my own experience like i the empathy for others comes from that sort of that awareness within with myself first right and and to have that time for for, for that awareness for myself i really needed that space and if we're always distracted, you know, with the next um, feed, you know, what's in our feed, you know, on, on Instagram or on, on the YouTube channel um, or 
you know, what do we have to do next? Like in terms of work, okay, how do I, how do I pay for my bill? Um, or the worry of like, you know, what, what, what do they think of me? Or maybe like, um, you know, maybe there's certain feelings of, you know, disconnection or, 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 or any of these things. These, these are all things that, you know, when we're stressed out or we're suffering, there is, there is always something there. The, the tendency is to find something to kind of fill in that space. Right. And then it's like more distraction. And that actually takes away from us to really connect with ourselves and to be able to really experience, okay, what is it that I'm really feeling right now? Like, how am I feeling right now? Like, and then what is like, what do I want? You know, like, like forget, like, instead of, instead of like doing, how can I make myself more attractive? How can I make myself so that other people like me? Even that question alone, that's already like, that's the wrong question to ask. Right? That's it's the like, wrong question to ask. Question. Wrong question. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's more like, what do I want? What do I what want? Do, like, what, what do you, what, what what do I feel is right for me, right? Um, and it's about like learning to um, to be there for ourselves, um, to be able to kind of like fill in our own needs and like to yeah, like to to take ownership, you know, of of being able to fill our own cup. Yes. Um, and then so like like and then yeah, and so I I feel like when we're able to as long like when we're finally able to get into that environment when we don't have to worry about these things naturally because there's the, the right conditions right of this space we will naturally think about okay what, what do i want right it's like if i don't have to feel stressed about things i don't if i don't have to worry about these things all these things are actually affecting our nervous system right it's like this anxiety right like this this like fear and um either fear or worry and that 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 does is a block to our feelings of joy and that's our blocks to sensuality right so if we're able to kind of come to a space of like where we can we where we can calm our nervous systems right then we can truly like enjoy like whatever it is that's that's there for us you know that that that's such a requirement you know that's such a requirement that automatically makes you sexy because that's the formula if you have your attention on what do i have to do to be attractive you're the rail like you you lost your conquest and your seduction if if that's what you're into right there because then mm -hmm. the focus of your attention is outside of the experience of you of sensing yourself and mm -hmm. from the ownership of your own experience and especially the ownership of your own pleasure and the delight in you that's that's what is in actuality attractive like you like someone because they have like a, i don't know they they own the mystery of being themselves and they enjoy how does it how it feels to be who they are and there are people that are that is gorgeous like extremely pretty and that they are very attractive but there are also like very beautiful like with the perfect face height muscle uh, skinny uh, whatever trending and like they look nice but after like three seconds of stocking, they look like dry. And I have, mm -hmm. like, I when I first realized that <laughs> was, I'm going to confess, 
I was a raver teenage girl. <laughs> so I went to the, I escaped. <laughs> hey, <laughs> went away. Me too. <laughs> climbed the walls from, from my mom's house. And then I had like the friends <laughs> waiting for me on the other side. And yeah, raves. And of course, like there were people in raves or any kind of party that after you arrived, greet anyone, everyone, had your drink or your juice, very healthy. After like one hour or two hours, like you're already settled in the space, doing your thing, enjoying. And I always became like hypnotized not hypnotized, fascinated with the people that danced, like not, not necessarily dancer, like anyone dancing at, at a party. And you can see the people that is dancing, pretending like it's, you become so naked in your movement. Like you cannot die. Like when, when you're moving to try to look cool, versus the guys or the girls that are dancing like really enjoying themselves even with their eyes closed because they don't care how they look like there's nothing more interesting to them than the the experience of themselves like sensing the pleasure going on through their movements and having this like wonderful merging that is actually our one true nature that is body mind together and those people like at times it was like that guy is ugly and has a big belly and i don't know why i am so fascinated but with time i understood or even girls like i am straight i am not into i am not lesbian i have lesbian friends but like there are women that are astounding, fascinating, and it's their sensuality. It's this connection that, like, they, they are having such a good time in their flesh that makes you want to join the party. <laughs> and mm -hmm. if you're thinking on how, how should I, what, what do I have to do to be attractive, then your focus on attention is not in your pleasure and you're there's there's no party going on in you to invite someone else <laughs> so that's why mm -hmm. you're gonna look dry when you're falling into people pleasing or trying to mm -hmm, to comply to someone else's standards and and it's the same thing yeah like the other side of the coin it's being indifferent be I mean, if you're indifferent to someone, you're already lost because you're even making the effort to not care when you do care. Like, when you really don't care, like, you don't even think about it. And I think yeah, that's the, the same thing with, with attractiveness. So you just nail the exact point <laughs> and the unsensuality <laughs> which is this yeah. is being your, your best friend so then you have a party going on in you yeah it, you know there because there's no need for anyone else anymore right when we if we really can feel for ourselves like 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 I, I i'm like i'm doing this for me right like naturally there is no need for anyone else like for, for someone that could be looking at you know just imagine someone on the outside looking at it right it, it's just like what you said it's like oh it's because this person doesn't care right so okay i'm gonna be like that i'm i'm not gonna care too but that's a that's a very artificial way of doing it right it's like yeah you can you can act that way but like let's see how long that'll last you Right, because because it's it's just a, a a performance, right? But like real, but what they don't understand is the is that they're not is the is the invisible. It's the thing the thing that they they, they don't see is that this person that 
that looks like that appears like they don't care is actually has a sense of like self love, like they have a very good relationship with their own self, and they they're gonna be with them no matter what. Like it, they they don't have. I I don't want to say like zero judgments. Maybe maybe that like like you know judgments can still creep up from time to time, but in that moment, that person is just really in love with themselves. They 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 only there is no there's no ego that's getting in the way of them really losing themselves in in that present moment you know they all they care about is is the present moment. being carried with yes. the present moment you know with the music or whatever it is that's it's really like they become it's it's as if they just be they really become what they're feeling you know it's not it's not something that's very conscious you know yes it, it's not skimmed. Yeah. it's not skimmed mm. it's not a strategy of i'm gonna make no. this guy love me oh no <laughs> super lost and <laughs> <laughs> and you know like i've been a little bit anxious about ai and chat gpt or i don't know the name of that thing and the coming of mm. robots mm. <laughs> and the question everyone asked like can robots replace us like like what's the frontier and i feel that you just like nailed it again because robots uh in the same way that i did it like i connected this thing with the <laughs> other thing that like this doesn't happen by itself like someone a guy or a gal made it and the computer and the app and some someone made it so it's in the service of someone else like the in the service to the commands of the programmer and it's a system in the service of the user so we it's not like robots will become humans that's impossible but we get like robotized when falling <laughs> into that kind of thinking of what can i do to be attractive to that person because then you organize yourself systemically in function of the other person and then you yeah. like like bypass the greatest power that we have as living beings that is the ability to choose the ability to choose so mm -hmm. instead of of owning like that one in you that is deliberately de delivered and chooses in the way in the same way that you choose where to place your attention you put yourself in a way in in a position of being chosen so and i've been there like i i can say that with that clarity because i i i've done i confess that I've done the spells <laughs> and like, yeah, let's do the astrology <laughs> and the synastry and see if we cosmically <laughs> match to be because I really want him for myself and no one else because yeah, sometimes women, women, you know, <laughs> but then like you lose yourself doing that and the way and the place where you own yourself is when you choose someone that chooses you. So it's not like your your focus, it's like broadly on ev everyone, but your focus is where there's focus back to you, reciprocity. Mm. That's when mm. when the magic of the mirroring and relationships really happen it's not that it's your other half and completes you but it does have like 
this equality, like there are areas where you match like in a mirror, like, okay, I see you, but I, I see you because I choose to see you because you're seeing me too. Mm. Yeah, I think like when I when I'm hearing that is we we there our tendency is to attract people who are kind of vibing on this on that kind of same frequency as us. And if there are wounds within us, if there are traumas that are unprocessed, if we if we have this sort of like this worldview, so suppose like, let's let's go back to that sort of that model in terms of attractiveness. It's about, okay, what can I do to make someone attracted to me, right? If that is their worldview, then they will, you know, they will do things to, to create this sort of like, for lack of a better word, this artificial attractiveness then what's going to happen is they're going to attract someone that's like that too yes right and yes. they're going to they're going to be able to see each other in that way um and likewise you know someone that is that that already has this sense of self love within themselves they when they they really understand uh their own values and who they are then the tendency is to to attract someone that has sort of very similar values as well. And they, they might, you know, and then we'll naturally repel, we'll naturally repel people that aren't like that, you know, that you, some people might feel that a discomfort of like you being so, I don't know, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think, I, I think like, like for me and my, I know my own personal experience, like, I, like, I know I can really touch my vulnerability. I can be more real. And I think sometimes it scares people because they're not used to it they're like oh whoa like it's um and that's kind of a good thing you know it's like you want you know some, maybe sometimes in the moment you're like oh you know they, like you, you you want them it's like oh like they're, they're turned away by it but ultimately it's it's a good thing because because you want someone that can kind of match you you know on that on that same level that can see you just like you said um yeah, there was another thought, but anyways. Uh, anyways, it takes mindfulness. Yeah, it'll come back. It will it will circle back. So yeah. And it goes back to empathy. Like empathy, but not in an Instagram feed influencer kind of way. Mm. Mm. that oh yeah I listen to you but I listen to you to be cool so I am cool and and like I can keep up with the trends <laughs> but what I am getting now from this is a different perspective and actually new for me on empathy because I had it rationalized but now I am considering empathy as, as a practice of sensitivity, but like sensing in yourself, like, like sensing your heart breaking or the heartbreakedness of the other, like with your boundaries, of course, like you don't get yourself sucked in, but empathy in getting getting the sense in your experience on how may be the experience of the other, but in a very practical and physical way. Like, yeah, the, the controls of the of the earpods are are handy and the the space in the mug in the handle of the mug like it fits my skinny fingers but also like bigger fingers and maybe even a, a kid's fingers can 
can hold on this. So as well, the interface of our Zoom call right now, like, I and you know, it's like, I am feeling something very nice. <laughs> I am feeling that someone actually thought about me, like me, Candia, me, like four years ago on the Zoom headquarters, making the code for the Zoom. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like your, your mom thought about you, like changing your diapers and making your milk bottles and and your grandma your mother and your you know like we're we're here yes because of ourselves but we're also here because of the empathy of thousands of millions of others along generations because there there has been people that could saw could see in advance our yellowing leaves and did something for us without us even realizing. So yeah, empathy goes a long way, but yeah. but but it's challenging to be em empathetic because it's gonna be hard if you're looking for recognition and applause for being empathetic. Like I don't know how many times does the programmers of the Zoom code get recognized because of their empathy? I mean, they 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 they, they get recognized with with oh, getting their jobs, <laughs> right? Not getting fired. They, they, yeah, not getting fired. Um, you know, like you know, these tech companies, like it's like it it's all about creating a really good culture, like. If you're talented, if you're gonna if you're gonna create something like really a good a really good product, like you're gonna be someone that's like of high value, and there's gonna be other companies that's gonna like want you to work for their company. So there's there's so much value when it comes to being able to listen, right? And then to to really really feel what is it that 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 person experience is experiencing the other side. The least, the, the more, the, the least amount of friction that you can create, then the better the experience is going to be. Just think about that. Like, just think about that meta metaphor. Like how, like that metaphor is like, <laughs> be applied to so many things. It's like our own, our ability to feel, you know, like I, like I was just um, reading the other day that like in terms of the you know men and women in terms of the this, this sexual experience right like in order for them to feel an orgasm for men it's really easy but for women it all starts with like feeling safe yeah. and it's all about creating that environment first and like all these things you know and it's like um so that's the friction, you know, like if we can get like if we can get that person out of their head and not having to feel worried, you know, like that body image, if they can truly like feel comfortable in their own skin and they feel honored and and all these things, they can they can totally feel free to to let go, right? And and then to actually allow themselves and to give themselves the, the, the permission to feel, you know? To feel and to so there it's like it's like how yeah. And it takes yeah. like like ah, it feels so good that a man acknowledges this. That is so important. There should be an award here for a mindful guy. <laughs> yes, and also like I am empathetic for for guys that like we are different species. I mean, I am a biologist. I know we are the same species, but. Mm -hmm. The way we are, we organize our pleasure is so different. At least my dog is making noises. <laughs> <laughs> because also physically, like simply our hormones, like we go from two polar extremes in one month. Like we run on 
estrogen like half of the month and the other half of the month it's the opposite than it's progesterone progesterona i don't know in in english so it's like it's really like being many women in in one and the experience of pleasure to to me and for a lot of women that i've worked with it's so non localized like yeah it's sexual pleasure it's definitely genitally organized but it goes beyond like it's it's definitely not not enough and well i i make a little disclaimer here that i am a heterosexual uh biological woman woman identified also as a woman in general and that i don't know much besides that so i know but i know there is much so i i asked for uh some pa patience <laughs> for the audience that knows more it's, this is just my experience but what i can say is that simply the 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 feminine genitals are like embedded in the body and it's like if somehow like the your whole body is the sex it's it's not like so located as a uh, men's penis and and the combo but it's like everything it's involved to the point of of not being able to easily have orgasms if the dishes are not washed like <laughs> a pilates student once told me yeah. that, that no i if if the dishes and if the kitchen is dirty it's going to be impossible <laughs> and that, i feel like how <laughs> ridiculous and picky and obsessive <laughs> until it happened to me no kidding <laughs> but i understand because, <laughs> because there's like um a kind of mindfulness context in the environment like like in arranging the the frames in the wall and and the sense of of your plants and how the cushions are arranged in the bed like all of those little nuanced stuff um uh, are precisely the context of proper water watering proper lightning and necessary tending to the self in order for pleasure to bloom in in a feminine in a feminine way mm. and at the yeah. same time like yeah. yeah yeah go ahead yeah the so like i was just going to say like like so so i'm i'm hearing this connection now like i see this thread um like you you talked about the dirty dishes because what the dirty dishes is is something that's very distracting right so that that's that's like these are things that calls the attention of our ego mind because our ego mind is all about identifying things it's 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 constantly scanning things and trying to look for things that are that are off and it's and it's just our our survival instincts right mm -hmm. when i think about ux design right when you when you visit a website like one of like one of the signs of a really good design is that you don't see anything that stands out that is very like out of the ordinary like the whole experience when you're going through an app or through a website it just it should it should just feel like you're flowing through everything the moment that there's something that doesn't look that looks a little bit out of place that is like a little bit close to the the frame or like that's unconventional right away the mind recognizes it immediately and it and there's like friction there so like good design is actually invisible and the same thing when it comes to magic tricks Wow. When I'm when I'm performing magic trick when I'm performing a magic trick all the movements that I do it's not about being 
quicker than the eye. That is a misconception that people have when it comes to magic. Magic is all about looking very natural. All the movements are very are all hidden. It and it's hidden in the guise of very natural movement that people they, 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 they just don't recognize. And then so when and that's why when it comes to the climatic moments, you're just like they're just surprised and they're in awe. And and that's how you know a magic trick is good, is because all the the secret moves, all the stuff that is done is is actually hidden from plain view and it's all hidden in in yeah in our natural movement so the moment that we give that opportunity for that part of our brain to be active right that already eliminate that already interrupts that whole experience that emotional experience that that we want to have yeah yes 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 great great image <laughs> or something so ungraspable and important for feminine pleasure, at least the kind I know of and most my students and friends, women friends. So yeah, it's about eliminating frictions. <laughs> yeah, like clean dishes, nice scent, a very good six second kiss in the morning, a WhatsApp <laughs> at noon, <laughs> flowers in the <laughs> afternoon, and then at night, Full action, <laughs> or I don't know. It, it can be like <laughs> wave full action at the I don't know at the bathroom of your office and break the hand wash basin or whatever. <laughs> like there are <laughs> every kind, but even even like <laughs> if you have like a passionate encounter at the parking lot of the airport, then. <laughs> There is, in that radical example, we can see the radical non-friction state that your mind has to be in. Of course, like, well, to make it pleasurable, like, not my style at all, like, I don't like that kind of risks, <laughs> but yeah. for someone to enjoy that situation, I require enjoy like physically pleasure and have three consecutive orgasms there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is to be able, like a condition is to be able to get into this frictionless state of mindfulness in an edge context, which makes me think, edge. yeah, like like a skill, like a concentration but not like a like a stoic muscle kind mm. of concentration but more like a martial artist mm. more like a, a when I, when I... more like a for example a, a skilled martial artist or like someone yeah like a like someone skilled at war but in in the artful way with, with the aim of the true warrior that is the cessation of conflict mm. it's the same requirement of refined mindfulness that you are so not at friction with yourself that you in a certain way modify the real space around you into the same non-frictionness. I think what's actually happening in in that moment. Let's 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 use the example of the airport, right? So we're we're in an environment that is high risk. When I think about how that, like, what's happening in relation to, let's say, my meditation practice. So, like, when I think about when I'm sitting in my silent meditation, so like at the 10 day course, right? And I'm sitting for like eight hours a day. So like like an hour each time. And then, and it would be like multiple sessions during the day. And I could be meditating for up to eight, eight hours. And so in, the, in that moment, when you're sitting in stillness and we are eliminating all of our 
inputs from the outside world. So we're, we're not allowed to have our phones at all. We're not allowed to write anything. We're not allowed to read books. We're only left with um, ourselves, right? And so there's a lot of concentration that we have as we're sitting. And during our sit, eventually what happens is, you know, so we have five senses, right? But in Buddhist psychology, they they call they they our inputs. They say there's actually six sense doors. So there's the five that we're familiar that we're familiar with, but there's one more which is our mind, and mm -hmm. our minds actually provide input too, right, into our experience. Right. And so, like one of the things that I actually you know was really like really got an intimate experience with is sitting and then watching you know so like when we're breathing there's there's a there's a there's a technique where we're we're really focused on just the very the most subtle sensations on the upper lip and it's it's like a pinpoint sensation that we're feeling as we're breathing in and out and it's really difficult to sustain that kind of attention for a whole minute without being distracted by something else but once once that happens and it, it does happen after about three days or well, it might be sooner it might be later for some people right and it really is a a moment of real peace and tranquility when we're finally able to just be have the experience of just that breath only and nothing else and while i was in that kind of experience of course thoughts start to come up and these experiences and a lot of times i know at least on the men's side because they're segregated when right? the women's on one side the men on the other side there's a lot of sexual thoughts that would come up in our minds right and so as soon as this comes up in our minds it's you can see the relationship of it sort of entering into our mind like as if it was like playing on a screen and then the body reacting to it immediately. And then so, and then as soon as we catch ourselves and we're, and then one of the things that I had to do is exp like experience what it felt like in terms of the sensations on my body reacting to that image and really getting curious about, okay, where, where does it, start where does it end where does it feel like the heart palpitation where does it feel tense and the moment i start to focus on the, the on that sensation and only that sensation then what happens is and let go of that image then it starts to subside again right mm -hmm. so there's a real sort of like experiencing and watching this sort of interaction sort of like if you if someone had to kind of sit back and look at how precipitation weather how does that how does that happen it's like oh water gets evaporated goes into a clouds and it starts to rain go back to the ground so it's like you can you can almost look at it from a a very scientific point of view because you're you're just observing this this sort of this reaction so so tying this back to like this 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 the airport i think that what's actually happening is the there's something that's playing in the mind and it's and it's creating this experience that's already there right in the mind and then you know and anything that happens to the mind it feels very real like you think about dreams right when we're, when we're dreaming it's happening in the mind and the body starts to react you know so like when when that whatever is playing in the mind is so is really present and we are already anticipating all these things the body starts to react in ways where it starts to anticipate all that and i feel that that what's happening there is that all that reaction that's happening on the body all the hormones or whatever that's being released for the, for the body in and in anticipation for what's to come i feel like it hijacks the, any part of that part of the brain that would normally feel anxious you know mm -hmm. maybe there is like some sort of anxiety 
maybe there is this energy there, but the thing is, is that th the mind is so engulfed with like wanting to enjoy this that it 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 actually overcomes everything. And I would actually counter. I I would actually almost want to say that it's there's a lack of mindfulness there <laughs> because the emo like the 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 bodily reaction is so overpowering that like there's no it becomes this i am like i almost want to see it's a it's a very primitive um like a primitive response it's it's like it's like it's like 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 our bodies like wanting to naturally procreate it's just like you know when you think about animals animals don't they don't go and learn <laughs> sexual education they just know how right yeah. naturally and it's like i feel like it's it's a part of our bodies that is just doing what it what it naturally wants to do but because the mind somehow this 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 individual has been able to kind of like allow themselves to have these types of um imagery and these things in their minds and there's no disconnect like there's nothing that is like like that part of our brain that's like cautious and like 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 afraid like that like that all that gets bypassed you know because the 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 craving is so strong you know when you think about like um you know if you want that chocolate or that ice cream or whatever it is it's like no i'm or i'm getting it no matter what <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. survival like yeah. you you need the pizza to survive like you cannot not eat you're gonna die so <laughs> that that's for sure and the sexual drive it's like we wouldn't be here if our parents wouldn't be here if our grandpa if our great 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 grandfather parents didn't have the drive to bring life forth through procreation like yeah we are in another wonderful uh, area in, in regards of that that you can sex without having kids which is wonderful but the the drive is <laughs> yeah of course yeah because <laughs> what could be better than bringing kids to the world out of love and not out of commitment or out of the spring heat you know even if it's winter <laughs> so you're pointing to something fundamental because like maybe i don't Maybe I don't think about that because I have studied a lot. No kidding. But like maybe there's people that just goes on trying to deal with their experience. And the only thing that they have to 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 handle that is their limited and restrictive education by biased morals of you are like you can have sex until you are married and have only sex for procreation like come on i mean 100 respect if that gets you on and you're into it <laughs> but the thing is that mm -hmm. uh hiding your libido your impulses your desires your fantasies it's it's not the way like repression it's not the way it's gonna bottle up and mm -hmm. come out as cancer so don't do that <laughs> whereas would you share like okay like you notice the the sexual fantasy or the image coming into your mind and instead of trying to block it you assimilate it but but not in a not even in a structured way but in a sensitive awareness way like you feel the rush in the heart and you see the things happening in your body and what i realize now as i'm saying this that it's actually revitalizing that you have a fantasy coming in and instead of saying no it wasn't me who thought that i don't i don't want to be that or whatever <laughs> it's like Having the curiosity of letting it run through you. And it's mm. 
revitalizing and as everything in life fades away and then you may have mm. like one or two minutes of serenity until the next sexual distraction comes but the, but it's <laughs> it's a distraction so that's mm. that's a very like mindfulness is a like the what you're sharing like mindfulness not not with with your rationality but mindfulness in the way of involving your whole self, like your presence in the space, your bodily heart palpitation experience, like you are in the experience of mindfulness with all your might. You bring forth yes. all who you are into that moment. And mm. you don't hide away from, from the distractions. You don't you don't bargain with them either like you deal with them but in a very gentle way and curious and and even brave because it's like okay if i don't repress it this is gonna move me so it's like i'm letting it move through me i i am moved and i am not stopping it to move away from me because something very challenging mm at least with my obsessive mind of overthinking is to <laughs> to tell myself a story and then go debate with that story and then like bargain with the story like yeah uh he did that to me but then i said that and then he said the other thing and i don't know what i'm gonna say maybe i don't say anything but if i was him and i and some and she told me this and i would think that and reply that so that's why i should reply something else instead instead of not not say, like that crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <And> then, <laughs> we all do it <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> but then if you start to get curious it's like ah there i there i go again or there there it goes again this aspect of me or go running through me that does this like here comes another sexual fantasy with the the favorite theme or or whatever so it's a way of being both in the real reality and in and dealing with the illusions in reality like the magician that I mean, it's not that you make the rabbit appear out of, of nowhere. While at the same time, you did make a rabbit appear out of nowhere from the other angle for the person. So it's, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. ah, it, it's like an embodied presence to make it sound very cliche. Mm. But that's really what it is yeah there's like like one of the words that came up as you were saying all that is uh surrender surrender yeah um it's like like stop getting in our stop getting in our own way right and you know i love what you said there about like like these moments of like let, let's say there's fantasizing right and I guess you know when when we feel safe and we're in the re in in the right environment, then we can allow ourselves to to fully experience what it feels like. You know, there's it's one thing to have this sort of this animalistic, this very primitive way of experiencing things, and it, and there's another thing where it's happening, but we're fully aware of it all happening as we're going through with it. You know, it's like oh yeah, I can feel my heart palpitation. I can feel the anticipation, I, I can feel everything, you know, and allowing ourselves to giving our, ourselves like uh, permission to to feel all these things. And, and if we like someone, it, instead of going into this, into the head and thinking about strategically what I can do, if, if my body really feels this way, maybe 
I, I'm just going to surrender and, and just say exactly how I feel. Yes. Even if, I, even if I'm going to be vulnerable, even if I'm vulnerable, but at least, like you said, there's this boldness that almost comes out of nowhere. It's almost unexpected because it's like, wow, this person <laughs> is saying how they feel, you know? And it's, sometimes it's so refreshing, you know? And, and it, 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 it opens up the doors. I know there's been many times for me where I don't know how the hell... I'm like, where did that come from, Andy? Like, how did you come up with that? You know, like, how did you come with that? Like, how did you say that? It's, it's and it was because in that moment, like, I I completely let let go of any judgment. I'm just gonna say what I'm gonna feel. Like, 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 just say it. You know, and and it's always a lot of times it's been met with it's been received like very, very well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's wow. yeah. Surrendering to that logical part of our brain, you know, it, it, that part of our brain gets in the way, you know, like the analyzing and all those things, it really gets in the way of our, of the connection that we can potentially have. Yeah. Just say what you feel like the courage is in the surrender. No, not in hiding and being like, like courage is in, in the surrender. Like, yeah, I'm going to say what I feel here. Here's the gift of, of my heart. Because what else do we have to offer to life? Uh, like, why shouldn't we do it? Like, yeah, go ahead and say, say what you feel. Be be exposed, be vulnerable, surrender. That means giving the gift. That is giving the gift. That is like being attractive to yourself, enjoying yourself, find, finding pleasure in who you are, and offering that. And this is also an offering of respect to the other people, like, I respect you so much that I invite you, I offer you a possibility to choose if you accept this or you reject this. Mm. That's a gift. Mm. Yeah. A mindful gift. I love that. Yeah, love that too. Mm. Yeah. Andy, would you share mm. with us a little experience, a mindfulness experience, so we can have something practical to get a sense of all that we have discussed along this wondrous episode? Mm. I think um, mm. I think having taking some time away for ourselves to maybe meditate and that could be on a cushion it could be on the chair it doesn't matter where you are but you know spend some time to you know close your eyes and really feel like do a body scan and, um, you know, before we do any sort of body scan, we might want to kind of um, give our minds, give our attention to something to focus on first. And it, it might be the, the sensation of the breath that's coming in and out of our nose. And so you can feel the, the touch of your breath on your upper lip. And if it's so subtle, then what we can do is we can feel the, the sensation of our belly as it rises and falls every time we breathe in and out. And when we're paying attention to it, we're not really trying to control the breath. 
we're just allowing our body to breathe for us and whatever it might be is what it is. And then so, so once we're able to follow it for, you know, a couple minutes and then what we might like to do is um, to just scan our bodies from head to toe and just feel, you know, your head, your face, your shoulders as you're going down, your arms, your chest, your belly, your legs, you know, and really like spend some time with it. And I think eventually, you know, when we spend enough time, you can notice any areas that are feeling any tension anywhere. And if you notice, we just intentionally allow ourselves to, to relax those areas so that, yeah, you can really feel at home. So our, our teacher you would always talk about us coming home, coming to our, coming back to our true home. So it's not just where our house is. Your, your true home is could be anywhere, wherever you are, but you're bringing your mind back to your body. And you want the feeling to be like, it's as if, you know, you're, you're going to work somewhere and then you finally go home and you just go, you just sit on the couch and you just like relax and you just, you want that kind of feeling of <sighs> being so comfortable in your body. And when you know how that feels like to be completely relaxed, your nervous system is nice and calm. Then I think that will first gives us a space to experience joy again because then we can really allow ourselves to feel whatever comes up. And it will also give ourselves some sensitivity so that when things do kind of feel up, these sensations come up, especially with our heart beating, you know, then in real life, when we start to experience things in life, there's going to be things that maybe our heart is going to palpitate and it's going to start beating a lot. And maybe that it will give us the chance to hold space for it and allow it to through not necessarily react. Just give it a few more seconds to allow it and just recognize it, acknowledge it. Oh, I know that you're there and you're probably, you know, telling me something right now. And be with it and sometimes that means it, it might mean that maybe you should say something in that moment sometimes it's hard for us to say and we we're, we're feeling that heartbeat and we're like no we don't want to say something maybe it's a moment to share what we're truly feeling maybe it could be something where we maybe we're, we want to react to something and then and we want to say something right away but then instead we allow it to sift through, acknowledge it for a moment, and really think about what is it that we want to do in that moment. Ask ourselves, you know, what do I really want to do? Um, so yeah, it's just about giving ourselves just some practice time to have that, to, to be acquainted with that feeling of what it feels like to, to ground ourselves and to be able to sit with whatever the, those sensations are, allow ourselves that moment, that extra few seconds, that minute to acknowledge it and then make our decision on what we want to do. Hopefully that um, that gives your listeners just something they can take away take away from our session today. <laughs>
Awesome. Yeah, a feeling of <laughs> spacious sensuality. Like, yeah, it's not something stiff you hold on to, like I have this state. No, it's like like welcoming things that go on through you, maybe even as you. And yeah, it it's like the UX flow. <laughs> like you navigate seamlessly through through your Instagram and <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get the attachment to a certain friction in your mind, in your experience. You you don't see the glitch or you you don't fixate in the glitch like uh, you let it go through along your skin. Yeah. I like it very much. Yeah. And I am sure that the essential is here in listening, watching this episode too. So tell us, where can we learn more about what you're doing? How can we, I don't know, <laughs> if, if you're teaching mindfulness retreat still with with your teacher lineage Trishnahan or you have an Instagram yeah. profile. Tell us what is what is the next step on the flow of this user experience of learning with you? <laughs> you know, that's a, such an interesting question. I, I, I came into this conversation without any particular aim, except to, to offer as much of, as, as my personal experience as possible. And, um, but you know, for anyone that wants to just hear about my own personal journey, and uh, you know, they can visit me at Mindful Magician which is uh, my so Instagram, so it's Mindful Magician. And if you're interested in learning a bit more uh, about the these mindfulness practices, so the, the Plum Village tradition, um, you can uh, visit uh, plumvillage.org. So plum, like the fruits, village.org. And it, there is a resource on there where you can find a local sangha. So a sangha uh, means a community of other practitioners, and um, in our in in the in the practice we we find it's one of the three gems jewels that we can take refuge in. And so when we are able to connect with other people who also want to kind of lead this life of mindfulness, it actually helps us to strengthen our own practice so coming back to creating that right environment so there's probably a local sangha already wherever you are with other practitioners so when you visit the the website plumvillage.org you might be able to uh, look for a local sangha and it'll, it'll be there um if you ever have the opportunity, there's also these 10 day Vipassana courses that are available in, I know there's 150 centers all over the world. So just go on Google, type in Vipassana, 10 day Vipassana, and it'll point you to the closest course that's available to you. Um, if it's anything like the one in Toronto, there's a three month waiting list usually for this kind of these kinds of courses. So if you're keen, um, I would highly, highly recommend for anybody to participate in one of these courses because, again, just think about you're eliminating all this outside of input and you're just going in there and you're just being with yourself for like eight to ten hours a day for like ten days straight. It's a very, very profound experience. One little disclaimer, though, is that if you have some sort of history of trauma, um, you want you 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 will want to check in with a health professional. So if you're seeing a therapist, um, you you might want to give some consideration about attending this course because you we are left in an environment where you're you're you have to sit with yourself and sometimes um, 
I'll use the analogy when we're swimming out in the in the sea, we can go into deep waters and not be able to kind of swim back to shore. Um, so that's the only disclaimer. It's it's not something for everybody, but um, it is a very beautiful practice to really increase that sense of that sensitivity of our mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. So. <laughs> explore being with yourself a little bit more with the plumvillage.org resources if you're ready to deepen even more go to 10 day vipassana experience i've done some of those and are intense <laughs> like like you really get to be in touch with yourself and relate with yourself maybe like like when you have an auntie visiting you for 10 days and it's like it's cute you haven't seen her for a while but then it gets intense <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you're you're ready for it and maybe even get clearance from your screen <laughs> that absolutely <Yeah. laughs> it's gonna change your life and especially go to follow andy lee at instagram on mindful magician yeah wonderful to have you here this been a great episode and i am so happy and so proud to have yes. this conversation thank with you. you thank you thank you thank you so much candy it was really uh, lovely to be here and to talk to talk to you about all this stuff thank you for giving the opportunity such a pleasure and thank you sensualists for being here at the sensual sessions podcast if you haven't subscribed already i'm gonna tell you what you are invited to do that is visit www.centraldepolar.com and get yourself signed up to get these episodes delivered on your inbox every week until next time remember to sense your fire so you can share your flame <laughs>